This is a great research article because it challenges a pre-established dogma, which has basically been burnt into our psyche, especially those of us which took nutrition back in the early 80s, where we discuss elements such as biological value, protein efficiency ratio, denaturization, transfiguration, and of course, the law of limiting amino acids, i.e. enter soy protein. Now, before we proceed, keep in mind, we want to look at the outcome regardless of our basically instilled teaching. And this is great because again, then it does challenge a common belief structure, at least in reference to nutrition, which even I had, meaning this is not a condemnation of necessarily whey protein or animal source protein, but an equivalency where basically we're trying to allude to if the same amount of protein, in this case soy protein isolate, is consumed per kilogram an individual as opposed to like a whey protein, you yield very similar gains in reference to muscle mass and strength. Now, Keep in mind, this is a 12-week training course where they're only training intensely about two times a week. So I want to keep the study within the context of the study and also at the same time, too, not discount the outcome, but more look at the reasons why the outcome came out to be an equivalent as opposed to looking for reasons why the study is defunct. However, though, just as well, the study is enlightening because it does challenge common dogmas in reference to protein types intake and gains in strength. To proceed as follows into the research, what we're looking at is a chart, if you've been looking at it as we've been talking, in reference to what the research discovered in reference to the outcome. So basically, they're looking at omnivores, and omnivores in this case, they're looking at whey protein, and of course soy protein isolate also too is the caveat we are discussing soy protein isolate there's going to be a lot of individuals which are going to question the use of soy but however though we're looking at the protein not anything else around it except the protein and once again the outcome to proceed all right vegan and omnivorous diets promote equivalent muscle mass gain study shows Protein intake is more important than protein source if the goal is to gain muscle strength and mass. This is the key finding of a study that compared the effects of strength training in volunteers with a vegan or omnivorous diet. I want to keep on saying omnivore, omnivorous, both with protein content considered adequate. In this study, which was conducted by researchers at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil, 38 healthy young adults, half of whom were vegans and half omnivores were monitored for 12 weeks. In addition to performing exercises to increase muscle strength and mass, the volunteers followed either a mixed diet, both animal and plant protein, or entirely plant-based diet, both with a recommended protein content of 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. At the end of the three months, there was no difference between vegans and omnivores in terms of muscle strength and mass increase. Again, focus on the outcome. Remove the bias and the confounding that may result from that bias. Just focus on the outcome. And the outcome was an equivalency. Not one better, not one worse, but an equivalency. Now, the researchers did add some caveats to that, which we'll cover towards the end in a few seconds. However, the researchers stressed that for the purposes of experimental control, protein intake was made the same in both diets by means of protein supplements. Omnivores and vegans were given milk serum protein isolate or soy protein respectively in accordance with individual dietary needs in order to obtain the targeted protein intake. Quote, in clinical practice, we know foods of animal origin generally have a higher protein content. Meat, milk, and eggs contain more protein per gram than rice and beans. For example, in a clinical application with plant-based foods as a sole protein source, vegans would need to ingest large amounts of food to obtain the same amount of protein. In some specific cases, this could be a major challenge. And there's where we're going to come into a lot of the bias because 
it may not be necessarily the vegans per se, if people like to always associate vegans as being not as physically adept, uh, but the vegans as say, and that false impression could be mainly due to the lack of protein intake in that particular vegan diet from plant sources per se, as opposed to the protein itself being vegan. To proceed as follows, the protein source, mixed or plant-based diet, made no difference. Again, focus on the outcome. Provided each subject received an adequate amount of protein, this result corroborates other data in the literature showing that a vegan diet can absolutely be complete if it is properly planned and executed. Potentially complementary proteins per se, um, or complementing proteins, something else that we learned in nutrition back in the early 80s in order to offset a limiting amino acid hypothesis. Previous studies suggest it can even be healthier than the omnivorous diet. Again, not trying to have a contest here. For this to be the case, however, it requires appropriate nutritional counseling and education regarding people's choices and restricting their intake to plant-based sources. All right, to proceed as follows. Two things. One, I am going to give two reference points, not just to the DOI study itself, which is going to show you the abstract, but also the DOI reference onto ResearchGate, which is another uh, information source, because you're going to see basically uh, a lot of the bar plots, confidence intervals, quartiles, and so on and so forth, which will not be viewed on the, uh, on the primary DOI citation. So you're going to see two links. Second, the soy protein intake isolate itself, they were kind enough to, in the supplemental information, give you the protein breakdown of that soy protein isolate. Now, if you notice, I highlighted the amounts of arginine, which again, it's great to be challenged, even with my belief. For example, I'm a big whey protein advocate. Now, I don't do animal protein per se as chicken, fish, meat, or egg. Uh, outside of that, I'm basically vegetarian, except for my dairy intake from whey. Uh, so I have my own institutionalized bias per se, but the trick is the outcome. Not to rationalize the outcome as being default, but to say the outcome is valid, then work backwards to find out how this outcome became so favorable towards the vegan diet. Now, here's the protein amino acid ratios as you see fit. Look at the arginine content. And the soy protein isolate is compared to uh, basically the whey protein serum. Now, also, too, often we were taught that the limiting amino acid in reference to soy was methionine. Now, there's also a caveat to that as well. Methionine has been shown to help uh, with longevity as long as it's on the lower end of the dietary spectrum. So it's quite intriguing when it comes to that. But still, just the same, quite amazing. So there it is, both information as he fit, beautifully laid out. Again, focus on the outcome, not necessarily our pre-institutionalized dogmas that we all have for those that basically were formally educated in reference to nutrition. Again, gratitude, thank you. Hope you find this information of use. I look forward to see you all once again next week. And always, always, always gratitude for the researchers for taking this course to enlighten us in reference to other protein sources per se. Catch you next time. Bye.